My Lord, my Lord, how awesome it is to come today and to be able to share. Anthony, I need to correct one thing you said. By my calculations, this is the 30th Sunday. 30th Sunday since we came out of the, the old situation. Because I don't imagine, like Anthony said, that we're ever going back there in terms of worship again. I think we're in a new situation. And so I'm glad to see you here. Some of you will be on the cyber sanctuary from now on because you're not even in Birmingham. And so we're glad to all our friends and family and frat brothers and, and folk who love us who are out of town. We say thank you for sharing and worshiping with us. And, and I'm so glad that you saw fit enough to come in and say something um, about the work we try to do here. We thank God for it. And we, we praise God for it. it. This has been a year for everybody. But the church has gotten its fair share of issues. But 45th Street has been good. It's been good because we've been taking care of business before this situation. And we thank, thank God for the willingness of all the members here to continue growing through this time. And that's important that we grow through this time. And so I also want to thank God for all our partners in ministry, all the folk you never see who your pastor has to lean on in order for good advice, not just family member. I thank God for all my family, but I, I thank God for the Larry Holmans. Okay. I thank God for the Charles Winstons. I, I thank God for the Michael Wesleys. I, I thank God for the John Kings. I thank God for the folk that I have to lean on who have so much, so much, so much wisdom with respect to pastoring. And, and don't think it's, it's, it's bad to, to let me lean on them. No, no, that, that's, that's another thing. They, they don't have a problem with talking to me about the issues of life as they see them and, and what we go through as pastoring. And I, I wish I could lean on George Jones Sr., but I can't anymore. And I wish I could lean on Clyde Beverly Sr., but I can't anymore. But God always has someone, and not just those who are pastoring, um, there, are some, there are some who just started who I lean on, like Brian Harper. These are my friends who I need to talk to, like Michael Matthews, who's new to pastoring but is a friend. And we thank God for all of them. And some are not even pastors, like Maurice Delane, who's been my friend forever. We thank God for him, like Casanova Bristow and Richard K. We thank God for them and their support. and Because God never put us here to do it by ourselves. He didn't. He, he wants us all to be supported by one another. And so praise God for everyone who's standing up in a pulpit today. Somebody who's preparing. If they're not already there, God, we ask you to bless them today. Um, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of Christ's grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Lord, draw me nearer. Nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Help us, Father. Help us. Help us. So many things are going on in the world today that push us away. We need something that draws us, pulls us, brings us in close. And can I tell you something? There's nothing more important than a relationship with the Lord and your folk, your family. And all your folk don't have your blood in them. Somebody needs to know that. We don't have to have blood to be family. Yeah, I've learned that a long time ago that some people who never would have any Jones or Sparks blood in them love me like we were born in the same womb. And I thank God for all of them. Y'all done got me messed up before I go into this word today, but that's okay. Because I don't think you can preach unless you pour yourself out. I think it's necessary that you bleed for folk in order to show them that Christ bled for them. I think it's important that you do that. And so today, I find it appropriate how the Holy Spirit works. But he's intelligent and he knows what's going on, and I think you'll understand what I'm saying when I tell you what this message is about. It comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Gospel according to St. Mark. How ironic we're in Mark 
in our Bible study, and, and uh, I'm excited about the miracles in Mark that we're going to be talking about for the next few weeks. That's our Bible study. But we're in chapter 10. Chapter 10 of Mark is a very busy chapter. Verses 46 through 52. Let me read it for you and see if it rings any bells if you've heard it before. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. And throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. And go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. I love this passage of scripture. And I think perhaps we can make you see it a little bit different than, than we have in the past. We use as a central thought today, I'm not throwing away my shot. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm not throwing away my shot. <laughs> well, let me ask you, what have you been doing during this time that we've been locked away, during this unprecedented time that we've been in COVID? Have, have, have you been taking the time to work on that special project since you couldn't go out anywhere? Have you taken the time to finally learn how to cook or read a book or do something? Working on that album, maybe? Have you been doing something that's going to make you better? I, I asked this question because I, I commented to my wife the other day that I don't think I've used this time as wisely as I could. It seems like I've gone from issue to issue with all of these jobs I seem to have, and I haven't taken the time to do any specific one thing that I wanted to do to make Andre better. You know, you can't ever stop growing. And this seems to have been a great time when everybody was focused, and you should have taken this opportunity, I could have taken, maybe I should say, to get better. It's hard to imagine God giving us a more concentrated time when we could have gotten better during this time. And, and, and the passage today tells us, watch this now, if you look at it from this perspective, the passage today tells us that you got to do some things while you're waiting on your change to come. You got to do some things while you're waiting for get better to come over the hill. You got to do some things in preparation. And I just wonder if we've done that. Look, look, the winning free throw isn't won at the line on the day of the big game. It's not. The winning free throw is won in the practice gym. All the many days before when you go in by yourself and on the day of the big game when you shoot your shot, as she just said, you already know based on all those previous practices that you can sink that shot. There's no question. You can't wait till the crowd is in your face, waving and, and making noise to try to wonder if you're going to make that shot. I guarantee you, if you look at the best of the best in the NBA, they can zone everybody out. And it's just them again in that high school gym that they've been using to shoot those thousands of free throws, and they know without a doubt, I'm going to hit this shot. But what have you been doing during the downtime, during the away time? The winning political campaign isn't won by hoping folks come out and vote for you. That's just not how it's done. It's one in the months and days ahead of time, walking and knocking on doors and having conversations with people and finding out exactly what it is they want to have done. That's when you know that people are going to vote for you. 
Now you can, you, it may be possible that you never get first team status no matter what team you're on. You may spend your time swinging your feet from the bench every week. But you got to, watch this now, if you got any coaches in here, you got to practice like you're the starter every single time because you never know when Tua might get his hip hurt. You never know when the next play is for you to go in and start showing why you should be the one in place in the first place. You must make preparation while things are in a lull, shall I speak, shall I say. You must make preparation when things are down. So it's now when we're living in circumstances that are less than we desire that we ought to be taking advantage and rehearsing, practicing, getting ourselves together while we're praying for God to give us the grace to change our circumstances, we ought to be doing something to get ourselves ready for those circumstances to change. That's what I see in, in Bartimaeus here. Yeah, Bartimaeus simply means, it simply means son of Timaeus. His name is really Timaeus, Bar means son. Like Simon Barjona is son of Simon. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all it is. And so, Bartimaeus is the son of Timaeus. Yes. That's his name. Yeah. Barta Cedric is the son of, <laughs> of Cedric. Well, we call him CJ. Yeah, you see how that works. Yeah. So Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He's going in with the disciples and because of the time of the year, the roads are crowded. People are bustling and, I mean, hustling and bustling throughout because it's a festive time of the year. And they're on the main road to the temple. So they come into contact with a lot of folk. If you are in a position like Bartimaeus is in, then you sit yourself to the side so you can maximize your contact with people every day. Because if your job is as Bartimaeus is, and that is panhandling, that's his job. And the reason Bartimaeus has to panhandle is because Bartimaeus is blind. Now, there may be a lot of things that you might hope for in that time, but being blind is not one of them. You're a man, you can't take care of yourself. If you're a man, you can't work. There's so many things that are, that are unavailable to you because you don't have sight. And unfortunately, sight problems, vision problems were numerous at that time. They lived in an arid time. They lived in a desert region, sand flying all the time. It was, not, it was not unusual for people to have vision problems. We had yesterday a uh, storm come through. We saw how it whips up the trees and how it whips up everything. But imagine if sand was in it. Sand in a storm like that can absolutely destroy your vision. And so here he is. And so when you're in that place, there's only so much available to you to be able to take care of yourself. They're in Jericho. Jericho is an anointed place. Jericho simply means to smell or a place of fragrance because Jericho was known across the region for having uh, uh, different types of flowers throughout. And so the, the city itself had various pockets of scents um, based on the flowers that grew in that area. And it, that, it was a city that lived up to its name. And that day, it would become even more fragrant because suddenly on that day, as never before, the Rose of Sharon showed up in the town. And then not only that, the Lily of the Valley came walking down the street that day. And so Jericho was even more fragrant because Jesus showed up. He demonstrated a greater fragrance that day that was the fragrance of grace than the city had ever known. And so as people are crowding the, route, are crowding the roads, as people are walking and talking, they may not have exactly known who it was that was walking down the street with this throng of people, but they knew he was something special. Watch this now. Watch this. They were talking. They were noising about. I heard about this man named Jesus, this man who they say been healing folk and giving them, giving them sound. Let me ask you this. You remember when you first heard about Jesus? Was it in Sunday school class? Was it at home? Was somebody in the streets talking about him? Somebody had to first say his name. 
for you to understand. Maybe it was your mom and your dad who taught you or your folk who, who raised you, who told you who Jesus Christ was. But the truth of the matter is all of us had to come to our faith by first hearing about Jesus Christ, by first understanding that there was something special about, his, about this man. And so watch this. Bartimaeus' condition made him prime, Pam, for listening. See, when you have yourself, when you're deprived of one of your faculties, it heightens the other. And so Bartimaeus, I can imagine as he sat there day after day, smelling probably more flowers than anybody else because that was a heightened faculty. He could probably tell which way the wind was blowing and which way folk were coming from because his smell was heightened. But not only was his height, smell heightened, and he depended on his smell. He needed to know if somebody was bringing flowers or if a donkey was coming down the street. He needed to know that, and his smell had to tell him that because he couldn't see what was coming. But not only did he have to depend on his, 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 his nose, he also had to depend on his ears. People who have vision problems hear differently than we do. They hear conversations and can pay attention to them because they depend so much more on them. Can you imagine that somebody had been around talking about them folk, they say those folk down in Jerusalem, this man down there has been healing folk. Now that may not mean anything to you, if you don't have any problems. If you're at home every day and all your cupboards are full of food, if your refrigerator is chock full, then somebody around you talking about somebody giving away food might not even catch your attention. But if you got to live every day trying to figure out how you're going to put something in the bowl, then you are ear hustling, as Karen said, more than anybody else. You want to hear where the food is going to be. I can tell you this right now. Let me bring it home to you. They've been giving away boxes of food all over town since the pandemic started. Boxes of vegetables and fruit and milk have been given on almost on a daily basis. Some of us haven't even paid any attention to the conversation. We've heard those conversations, we've listened to folk, and we hear them and we move on. But there are other folk who've been listening and moving toward the conversation. Tell me where they're giving them out. Because I need to go there because I got more folk at my table than food on my table. And I need to get every bit of help I can. Another reason, some folk have not had a drop in their income during the pandemic. Others have lost their job. Others have had problems associated with the income and the regular flow. Bartimaeus had that every day. I hope you hear me. He had no knowledge at the beginning of the day how he was going to eat that day and where he was going to sleep that night. And so he needed to hear what people were saying just to be taken care of. And I found this to be the case. You need to learn how to use what you have until you get what you want. Use what you have until you get what you want. Some people spend so much time wishing for something. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I had this, but, but, but you don't have that right now, so use what you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know you want to be able to have this kind of activity, but God hadn't given you that right now. What has he given you? use that. And so since Bartimaeus wanted to see, but he didn't have that right now, so he had to listen. And you have to make the best of the tools you have. You don't have to fake it, because people see that really quickly, but Bartimaeus had to listen. And in listening, he had overheard someone talk about this man named Jesus who was healing folks, CJ. See, see, if you're not struggling, if you're comfortable where you are, then that stuff doesn't get your attention. But if every day, all day long, all you can think about, I wonder what I would do if I could see. I wonder what I could do if I could go and visualize and actually see those flowers that I've been smelling all day long. I wonder what a rose actually looks like. I know what a rose smells like. I wonder what a tulip looks like. I, I know what it smells like. The truth of the matter is, you create word pictures in your mind. 
You create pictures in your mind even when you can't see something. How many of you, you are doing something right now that you visualized before you got there? And then God came along and blessed you. Now, the reality may meet what you visualized, but I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. Like right now, we have visions of what heaven can be. But the Bible says that I has not seen, nor has it heard. It said it hadn't even entered into the hearts of man what God has prepared for us. We only imagine certain things, but usually it pales in comparison to the reality. So when Bartimaeus heard that commotion that day, y'all, you need to hear me. He was using what he had until he could get what he wanted. He heard somebody mention the name Jesus. That went back to his mental register. Somebody had mentioned Jesus before. I've heard these folk talking about Jesus before. Bartimaeus knew, here's my opportunity. This man I've heard about named Jesus, they say heals people. They say he actually gave a deaf man his hearing. They say he actually has given folk who were blind sight. The same Jesus is walking down the street. There's no way under God's green earth that I'm going to let this man walk past me and not get in his way, not let him know I'm here and I believe he can help me too. In other words, if he was sitting here today, he would say, I'm not throwing away my shot to get better under these circumstances. He, just like Lynn Manuel wrote, it's amazing. He said, I'm young, I'm scrappy, and I'm hungry. He said, and I'm not throwing away my shot. He said, I got to holler just to be heard. And that's what he did. He jumped up. He jumped up and he said, Jesus. Now watch this. Not only do you have to uh, 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 recognize that this may be your only chance, he realized that, look, you can't let folk get in your head either. Because all the folk around him, the other folks sitting there on the road with him, on the block, they kept saying, sit down, Bartimaeus. Why are you trying to get all the attention? You always hollering there, folks. Why are you, why are you in the way today, Bartimaeus? And the reason is they think that you might get something better than them. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They think that you might get a blessing that they deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no, no. Look, these same folk, these are some crowd folk. Don't you know there's some people who just crowd folk? They're not trying to help nobody. They're just in the crowd. They just murmur. They just talk. They might even have something they could bless you with, but they're not doing it. They're just in the crowd folk. They're not trying to lift anybody up. Watch, look, watch this. A few days after this, I'm just going to fast forward. A few days after this, Jesus is going to be coming by again. And the same folk who were in this crowd are going to be saying, crucify him. These are the same folk. The same folk who... Just a few days before saying crucify him, the same folk in the crowd were saying Hosanna. Crowd people. You can't let the crowd get in your head. Unfortunately, some folk can't do nothing but follow the crowd. Watch this now. You follow the crowd. And when you follow the crowd, you end up doing what the crowd does. Oh, yeah, what the crowd does. See, 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 some people are uncomfortable hearing about your problems. Yeah, because they look at you not for you, but as a mirror. And when they look at you as a mirror, they look at you for what they haven't achieved or what they don't have. And if you're doing a little bit better than them, then resentment can come up. And that's a problem. And that's why they don't want you shouting. They don't want you telling folk about your testimony. No, 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 no. They don't want to hear folk congratulate you for changing. They don't want to hear people celebrating you for growing. Have you ever met people who find it hard to celebrate people? Let me tell you something. We learn this as children. The basic thing you can do in life is learn how to clap for other folks. That's why the teachers always make you do it. Come on now. Let's clap for little, let's clap for little Jessica now. Jessica spelled her name. Come on now. Let's learn how to do it. And, and you got to teach folks. That it's okay to sometime, because one day is your day to spell your name, and everybody's going to clap for you. But some folks seem like they missed all them days in school. They don't know that sometimes all your job is just clapping for somebody else. And that's an important thing in life, because sometimes you marry that person. 
who does not know how to celebrate you. That person who does not know that they were given to you to make you better, not to compete with you, not to, not to, not to put you down. That's a problem, and we need to learn how to celebrate one another. But that crowd that day wasn't trying to celebrate Bartimaeus. How do I know that? Because if they had been, they'd have been calling for him. Jesus, Bartimaeus needs you. Jesus, come help Bartimaeus. Jesus, Bartimaeus been blind all his life. Touch him, heal him. They weren't saying that. They were saying, shut up, Bartimaeus. Be quiet, Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus said, I'm not throwing away my shot. In other words, my need for change has to be greater than their need to stop me. I've got to excel above what they're trying to do right now. And so that means he got to swallow his pride. Yeah, you got to swallow your pride sometimes. You got to be willing to make a fool out of yourself by the crowd standards. You got to be willing to stand out there, get out there, and let folk know, yeah, yeah, it might not succeed. They might end up laughing at you, but you won't know unless you put yourself out there. You got to try to get yourself together. Bartimaeus every day had to swallow his pride, y'all. Oh yeah, his whole existence was about pride swallowing. Every time you have to open your mouth and extend your hand and say, can you help me get something today? Is there anything you have left that you can bless me with? For any man with any self-respect, that's a pride swallowing moment. In that society that was so masculine, so male-oriented, to have to depend on strangers to take care of you had to be a pride swallowing thing and we have built this same foolishness up in our community that you can't help ask people for help without feeling bad about it. What child has something to do with being born in poverty? That's not a child's problem, that's a community's problem and yet children would rather steal than ask someone for some help. We've got to change that situation. Bartimaeus made the decision, y'all, that I'll be a fool for this man named Jesus Christ because I believe he has the answer to the problem that I have. And, it's, and look, watch this now. If you make a decision to come to Christ, other, other people will make fun of you. The reason is they think that you, some of them think you're weak because you want to depend on somebody else to take care of you. Can I tell you, there's somebody bigger than us. That's somebody we need to depend on who is better and bigger and brighter and knows what we need. Every one of us has to depend on somebody. And I need to tell you this too now. Everybody that's going to follow Christ is going to suffer some persecution. You're going to be talked about. They're going to lay you out. The biggest problem Bartimaeus had, though, was taking that first step. How many of y'all know that's the biggest problem? It's the getting up in the morning. That's the hardest thing. Look, all of them were in the boat. Only Peter got up. Yeah, and even when Peter got up, he said, I believe that's Jesus out there on the water. Only Peter had the courage to step out onto the water because courage is a special thing. Not everybody has mustered the strength to be able to do that, but sometimes the hardest thing is getting up showing up. I congratulate people when they come in to my courtroom all the time. They come in and they are absolutely in trouble. They haven't done anything we ask them to do. In fact, the drug test they just presented to me is they failed it. They got everything in their CVS cell in their drug test. But how do you change that person? How do you affect that person at that moment when they know I'm at my lowest? And I know my whole life is in this man's hand right now. He can affect my freedom. Before I can help you, I got to build you up just a little bit. And I got to say, man, let me tell you something. I said, you're in trouble right now, that's for sure. I said, but I'm celebrating you right now because you came to court. You got up, you walked through the front door. You came into the courtroom. You sat here while I called all these other folk names. You went and took that drug test I just asked you to take, knowing all the stuff that had been going on. And for that and that alone, we're celebrating you right now. Suddenly, I got their attention. I can help them from that point. Now, wonder if you have that kind of courage. 
Whatever it is that you're looking to do, are you willing to take the first step? Are you willing to get up? Are you willing to get out of the safety of the crowd? See, it's safe in the crowd. As long as you sit in the crowd, nobody can pick you out. Nobody can talk about you. You can laugh. You can... But when you step out, when you identify yourself as a flag out there waving, can I tell you, it's okay, you can be a flag for him. The Bible said he's Jehovah Nisa. He's already our banner. People are already paying attention to him in the first place. Just get behind him and let him be the one who guides you. And then this is important. Let go of anything that's holding you back. Anything. No, no, this is a big thing. The Bible says, look, 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 look. Re read this in the scripture now. It says, <clears throat> when he heard it was Jesus, he began to shout. It's the first thing he did. I'll make a fool for myself, all right? And then verse 50, if you're not reading it, it says, throwing his cloak aside. Throwing his cloak aside. Now, now I've just spent the last however many minutes up here telling you that this man was blind. This man was destitute. Don't know if he had a home to go to. You and I can imagine that in that community, that poverty-stricken community, being blind would have meant he had meager possessions, which means that every day he probably got up with the clothes on his back. And here he is, here he is, and that he's willing to take the one thing that he absolutely needs every day, living in that region, and throw it away. He says he threw his cloak away. You got to know that as soon as he threw his cloak away, somebody else in the crowd was grabbing his cloak up. And he's willing to throw off any of the material constraints of this world just to get to Jesus Christ. I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not letting any of this stuff that I've been holding on to keep me down. Jesus Christ. Here I am, I give me and me alone to you, and all the rest of that stuff can go away. He threw his cloak away. Can't let anything hold you back. Now, we sit up here and we fool ourselves about what we are allowing to stop us. Uh, I got to take care of my house. Well, you're not taking care of the house anyway, if you really understand what's going on. Because in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it can be gone. I just heard this week the most horrible thing. We used to live about 40 miles from Lake Charles, Louisiana. So anytime I hear that on the radio, it always piques my curiosity because we go to restaurants and we go eat in Lake Charles when we were at Fort Polk. And this week I, I heard a radio broadcast that said, that said the residents of Lake Charles are hunkering down because Hurricane Delta is coming through just three weeks ago another hurricane came through and not a building in the city was spared. Not a building in the city was spared from the first hurricane. And here it is three weeks later, another hurricane is coming through, bringing down the raft. And can I tell you, before those two hurricanes got there, those folks were securing their homes too. Those folk were going to work every day, making sure they paid their mortgage and making sure they paid everything. And yet, in three weeks' time, two hurricanes can come and up in everything that you're putting your stock in. Can I tell you, you got to put your, some, your stock in something that's more solid than these buildings. Jesus Christ, I would suggest to you, is the one we need to depend on. Last thing I want to tell you is this. One day you're going to understand God's purpose for you. No, 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 no. I don't know. One day you're going to understand God's purpose for you. I'm not talking about you doing what you want to do. One day, if you haven't figured it out yet, you're going to understand what God intends you to do, what he wants for you out of this life, how he wants you to be a blessing to the kingdom. A lot of people do things that may be a blessing, but may not have eternal or kingdom consequences. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Just having money doesn't mean you're blessing folk for kingdom purposes. If you're not leading thing, people to Christ, the Bible tells us only what we do for Christ is going to last. That doesn't mean you can't do good things. It doesn't mean you can't be benefic beneficial to other people. 
But one day it's going to click. If it hadn't already, it may have clicked already. You may have understood already that my job here is to be beneficent to people and to show them what a man of God or woman of God looks like. But it may not. Until then, you need to be preparing yourself. You need to be working hard to that day when it clicks so that when God allows you to get in the game, when God allows you to come off the bench, when God allows you to help folk in the way that you are meant to help folk, that you're prepared to do that. He's going to reveal the purpose to you. How about this now? How about this? God, why was Bartimaeus born blind? Why did he go through all those years of suffering? Why is it that he sat on the side of the road begging? The only reason that the Bible gives us is so that that day that Christ came over that hill, came up that street, and saw Bartimaeus sitting there, Bartimaeus could be the example that Christ needed, that I am the Christ, and others can see him after all these years of sitting here, and he could be a testimony to the rest of them. If you go on and read the scripture, it says that after that day, Bartimaeus followed Christ everywhere. That's the reason he was sitting there, so that he could be a, I am a living testimony as to how good God can be. And let me ask you, are you a testimony? Has God blessed you in order to be the one that others can see him through? Everything changed that day that Christ passed by. Bartimaeus said, I'm not missing my shot. The question is, will you be ready? Will you be ready the day it comes? Will you be ready the day Jesus comes? Can I tell you something? You might not want to hear this. Anybody who doesn't know Christ is blind. And so don't think Bartimaeus is sitting in a situation like you're sitting, that, that you're, you're, you, that's unique from you. Anyone who's not sitting in a relationship with Jesus Christ, is also blind. Come on now, you know that. Come on, the songwriter been telling us that all. You've been singing that song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was, but now I see, if you don't see that he's the Savior, you're blind too, and he needs to come and give you sight. If you've never given him your life, you're blind too. And he needs to come open your eyes so you can see. If you don't see the suffering of people around you, you're blind too. If you're not using the resources that he's given you to help somebody else, guess what? You're blind too. If you're not willing to make a fool out of yourself in the crowd, guess what? You're blind too. If you're not willing to get rid of all the entanglements of this world just for him, guess what? You're blind too. I wonder if you're going to throw away your shot when he comes over the hill to see you. My, 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 my testimony for you today is he doesn't come every day, but when he comes, you got to be ready. Bartimaeus knew it. He said, I can't expect Jesus to come to this town every day. And so if this is the day he's going to come, I'm all in. I'm ready. I'm ready to throw my hands up. I'm ready to throw my voice up. Whatever I need to do, I'm ready. My question to you is, will you be ready? Have you given yourself to him? If he came walking down the street today, came walking in this aisle today, would you recognize him? Would you jump up and say, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to give myself to you. I want you to bless me and keep me. I need to know you. My prayer for you today is that you will be prepared when Jesus Christ comes to you. Not everyone in the generation of Christ received Christ as their Savior. Not everybody. Think about it now. All those folks on the street, all those folk in the crowd, and yet it was a blind man who had the greatest need and the greatest faith to come out of that crowd. You didn't think about all those folk walking the road to Jericho, and yet it was one blind man who walked away seeing clearer than anybody else. And that was Barnabas. Don't worry about the crowd. Just keep listening, because I know he's coming. If he hasn't come yet into your life, he will. Just keep listening. Listen to the songs. Listen to the prayers. Listen to the people of God talking. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're here today and you've never given yourself to Jesus Christ, 
if you've never allowed him to become the savior of your life, then now is the opportunity for you to come and to allow him to be not only your savior, to be your Lord. So I'm empowered today. Thank God. It's my mission to extend to you the invitation of fellowship and lordship. He wants to be your savior. Not only that, can I tell you this? He wants to be your friend. He just loves you, and he wants you to live with him forever. And if you haven't considered where you might live forever, I strongly suggest that you try Jesus. I love seeing these folk in this room right now walk up in here every Sunday. I can't imagine how heavenly excited I'll be when we're over yonder together too. I can't imagine how it's going to be to live forever with these folk. And who in their right mind wouldn't want somebody they love to be with them forever? Today is the day. Now is the time. The doors of our church are open. Whosoever will, let them come right now.